What could possibly drive a 16-year-old boy to commit an unthinkable crime against his own mother? In the heart of Boise, Idaho, a chilling crime unfolded that would leave a community in shock and disbelief. This is the case of Ethan Wyndham, a seemingly average 16-year-old boy with an unassuming demeanor. But beneath this facade lay a dark undercurrent that would lead to a horrifying event on a cold January morning in 2007. The day started like any other. Dawn broke, casting long shadows over the quiet suburban neighborhood. However, as the day unfolded, an unimaginable horror was about to be discovered. Ethan Wyndham, a child of the community, a teenager with friends, hobbies, and a life not dissimilar to any other young person, had committed an act so heinous it would shake the very core of those who knew him. The crime scene was a grotesque tableau that no one was prepared to face. The victim was Ethan's mother, brutally murdered in her own home, the one place she should have been safest. The authorities were stunned, their faces etched with disbelief as they processed the grim scene, a mother's life snuffed out by her own offspring. The details of the crime were horrifying. The brutality, the calculated coldness of the act, were far beyond what one could expect from a 16-year-old. It was a crime that seemed to belong in the pages of a thriller novel, not in the quiet suburbs of Boise. As the news of this horrifying event spread through the community, a wave of shock washed over everyone. There was a sense of disbelief, a struggle to understand how such a thing could happen. Friends, neighbors, and even family members were left reeling, their minds filled with haunting questions. The most pressing of them all was, what could drive a boy on the cusp of manhood to commit such an unthinkable act? What could lead Ethan Wyndham to murder his own mother? As the news of this horrifying event spread through the community, everyone was left asking the same question why. As the dust settled on this gruesome act, the authorities began their quest for answers. The crime scene, a chilling tableau of violence, was a testament to the dark depths the human mind can plummet. With every piece of evidence collected and cataloged, the puzzle started to take shape. The police, experienced in the art of deduction, began their investigation in earnest. They methodically pieced together the fragments of the night, each piece a stark reminder of the horror that had unfolded. Fingerprints, DNA samples, and other forensic evidence began to paint a picture, a picture that pointed them towards one individual, Ethan Wyndham. When confronted, Ethan's reaction was far from what one might expect. There was no panic, no denial, no attempt to flee. Instead, he calmly confessed to his actions, his words devoid of any remorse or regret. It was as if he was talking about someone else's deeds, not his own. His chilling confession sent a shiver down the spines of even the most hardened detectives. But there was more to Ethan than just his confession. A psychological evaluation revealed a deeply disturbed mind, a mind capable of violence. The psychologist's reports described a young man with a lack of empathy and a disregard for societal norms and values. Ethan was a textbook case of antisocial personality disorder, his violent tendencies fueled by a volatile mix of anger and resentment, yet this was no ordinary case of antisocial behavior. Ethan's violent actions were not random or impulsive, they were calculated, premeditated, and executed with a chilling level of precision. This was not a crime of passion or a momentary lapse of judgment. It was the cold, calculated act of a disturbed mind. With Ethan's confession, the case seemed straightforward, but was there more to this story than meets the eye? As we delve deeper into this case, we'll explore the trial, the verdict, and the aftermath of this shocking crime, seeking to understand not just the what, but also the why. Stay tuned as we unravel the complexities of this chilling case. In a courtroom filled with tension, the trial of Ethan Wyndham began, promising to unveil the true depth of this horrific crime. The trial was a spectacle that gripped the nation. The testimonies were harrowing, painting a chilling picture of the events leading up to this unthinkable crime. Each witness account brought new, shocking details to light, revealing the twisted world Ethan Wyndham inhabited. The defense presented an argument of insanity, claiming that Ethan was not mentally competent at the time of the crime. They called upon expert witnesses, psychologists, and psychiatrists who testified about Ethan's troubled mental state. They described him as a young man lost in a world of disturbing fantasies, unable to distinguish between reality and his dark imagination. But the prosecution was ready to rebut. They argued that Ethan's fantasies were not evidence of insanity, but rather a testament to his calculated cruelty. 
They presented evidence that Ethan had meticulously planned his actions, demonstrating a level of premeditation that contradicted the defense's claim. The prosecution also highlighted Ethan's lack of remorse, pointing out his cold demeanor throughout the trial. They argued that this was not the behavior of someone who was mentally incompetent, but rather a clear indication of his guilt and lack of empathy. The court was left to weigh these arguments against the backdrop of Ethan's disturbing fantasies. It was a daunting task, as the line between insanity and evil became blurred. The horror of Ethan's actions was undeniable, but the question remained, was he a product of a disturbed mind or was he simply a monster? The trial was not just about determining Ethan's guilt or innocence, it was about understanding the mind of a young man who had committed an unthinkable act. It was about finding justice for the victims, while also grappling with the complexities of mental health in the criminal justice system. As the trial progressed, it became clear that this was not just a case of a troubled teenager, but a deeply disturbed individual. With the evidence presented and testimonies heard, the jury was left with the daunting task of deciding Ethan Wyndham's fate. After hours of deliberation, a decision was finally reached. The jury, moved by the gravity of the crime and the overwhelming evidence, found Ethan Wyndham guilty. Sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole, a collective sigh of relief echoed through the courtroom as justice was served. The verdict was met with a myriad of reactions from the community. For some, it was a sobering moment of closure, while for others, it was a chilling reminder of the evil that lurked in their midst. The courtroom was a sea of mixed emotions, relief, anger, sadness, and shock. The aftermath of the trial was equally significant. It sparked a broader conversation about the state of mental health services for teenagers and the need for early intervention. The case shone a spotlight on the tragic consequences of untreated mental illness, driving home the urgent need for reform and better support systems. Ethan's case had far-reaching societal implications as well. It served as a stark reminder that violence can erupt in the most unexpected places, even within the confines of a seemingly ordinary suburban home. It underscored the importance of maintaining vigilance, fostering open communication, and creating safe spaces for individuals to express their struggles. Psychologically, the case of Ethan Wyndham sent shockwaves through the professional community. It challenged preconceived notions about the nature of violent offenders, prompting renewed focus on understanding the complexities of the human mind. It underscored the need for early detection and intervention in cases of severe mental health issues, particularly among adolescents. In the end, Ethan Wyndham's story is a tragic tale of a young man's descent into darkness. It's a stark reminder of the devastating consequences of untreated mental illness and the urgent need for societal change. The case of Ethan Wyndham serves as a chilling reminder of the dark corners of the human psyche. In the quiet town of Boise, a shocking crime unveiled a tale of a disturbed mind and a community left in disbelief. Ethan Wyndham, a seemingly ordinary teenager, committed an unthinkable crime that shattered the tranquility of this small town. His actions set off a chain of events that would leave a lasting impact not only on his life but on the lives of those around him. The subsequent investigation shed light on a mind plagued with psychological issues. Evidence pointed towards Ethan's troubled mental state, revealing a hidden world of darkness beneath his ordinary facade. The case highlighted the importance of providing mental health support to young individuals, showcasing how untreated psychological issues can escalate to horrifying extents. The trial that followed was a spectacle of its own. The courtroom was a battleground where legal experts dissected every facet of Ethan's life. The defense argued for leniency, citing his mental health issues, while the prosecution sought justice for the victim, pushing for a severe punishment. The trial brought into focus the delicate balance the justice system must maintain between accountability and compassion. The verdict when it came was a stark reminder of the consequences of such heinous actions. Ethan was found guilty and sentenced accordingly. The decision sent a clear message to the community and beyond. Actions have consequences, no matter the age or circumstances of the perpetrator. Yet, the aftermath of the verdict was not about revenge, but about healing. The community rallied together, providing support for the victim's family and working towards understanding and addressing the underlying issues that led to such a tragedy. This case became a catalyst for change in the field of juvenile justice, 
prompting discussions on the need for early intervention and proper mental health support for young individuals. As we reflect on the case of Ethan Wyndham, we are reminded of the complexities of the human mind and the dire consequences when those complexities turn into darkness.